So here we are walking up to my front door. Darcel Bailey has been waiting to be a homeowner for years. She just moved in with her kids. This is my living room. Excuse the boxes. The road to this place has been long and hard. Darcel joined the Air Force at 18. She had no idea the uphill battle she'd face when she left. What did you find when you came back? Like, how hard was it to kind of get back into real life or try to adjust? I was just grasping at it, whatever. So once I um, discharged, I, I had a job as a receptionist. I had a job working in a laboratory. Like, they were just all varied because I just wanted to find something I could do that will provide me with enough money so we could survive. These agencies that are supposed to be here for us are quick to say no. Even when they know you deserve or need some services, you have to jump through hoops. And they get shuffled around a lot. Donna Deutschman says the lack of access is common when veterans return home. She's the CEO of Homes for Families, a nonprofit offering affordable home ownership to former service members. We recognized a deep need um, for veterans to have affordable housing. In 2020, more than 37,000 veterans experienced homelessness. Women are at a higher risk for housing instability. Approximately 1.1 million veterans are living in poverty. They're being deployed for long periods of their lives. Sometimes they lose the whole decade of their 20s. Things that we learn in our 20s are when we're able to make mistakes and it doesn't matter much, they come home without those skills. Darcel heard about Homes for Families on the radio and couldn't believe it when she found out she qualified. It just seemed unreal because I've been so told no so many times. They have earned these houses. They've made them possible through their service and that their family deserves every penny saved in acquiring these homes. Under the program, veterans are offered low-cost mortgages based on their income. The homes are also equipped with special considerations other homes might not have. They are all built with a certain amount of modifications specific to veterans. And that's very important, whether it's providing lighting that's veteran specific for both PTSD and for hearing, especially quiet homes, drawers that close quietly, lots of noise attenuation so there aren't sudden sounds that could really exacerbate PTSD. Things like open areas so that the anxiety level is very low. So far, the organization has built dozens of homes in several California communities. A $100,000 grant from the Gannett Foundation's A Community Thrives initiative will help them construct more. We're building neighborhoods. We're not building just a house. Darcel used to live on the ground floor of an apartment building. We lived on a super busy street. We lived by the um, train track, so it would shake when the train came. We were very vulnerable. I'm a single mom with three kids, and on the first floor, anybody could have tried to come in. She used to have to get up an hour and a half early to get to work. She's a teacher for kids with disabilities. Now, it's a five minute drive. How did you feel in that moment when you moved in? Unbelievably grateful, happy. I just wanted to make my kids proud, you know, seeing them and, and then think, oh, I want to paint my room this color. Or even my younger son telling me, this kitchen is perfect. It's just, and the house is just the right size, like things like that. It, it means a lot.